Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kitgo, and this is the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Gaming OC 8G. So we reviewed the Founders Edition RTX 2080 last week, and this is essentially Gigabyte's take on that GPU. So it's got a larger triple fan configuration, we've also got RGB lighting, and it even comes factory overclocks out of the box. Speaking of that factory overclock, it does run at 1815 MHz by default, so that is an extra 15 MHz over the Founders Edition. However, if you enable OC mode within Aorus Engine, which is the accompanying software suite, you can raise that to 1830 MHz boost clock. We're going to start with a look at the design though, and the first thing to note is the size of the card. So it is both slightly longer and slightly thicker than the Founders Edition. That is because it measures 286.5 millimeters by 114.5 millimeters by 50.2 millimeters. So that thickness does mean it's a two and a half slot card. So if you have an ITX chassis, for instance, you may want to check that this gigabyte will fit. But in the grand scheme of things, it is on the larger side, but it is no means a monster in the likes of the Asus Strix or the Zotac Amp Extreme cards. This matte black shroud that you can see is made from plastic, and there are a few grey accents, but it is mostly black, so it is unlikely to clash with any particular colour scheme you've got going on with your build. And on that note, it's actually good to see Gigabyte has ditched the orange accents. This used to be a feature of their, you know, their GTX aftermarket cards that we've seen from previous generations, but now no more orange, it's just grey and black, so it's likely to work in your colour match build a lot better than previous Gigabyte cards would have done. The most interesting thing on the front of the card, however, is of course those three fans. Each fan measures 82mm in diameter, so they're not the largest, but you of course get three of them. But what is interesting is the fact that the middle fan is set to spin in reverse, meaning it spins the opposite direction to the two outer fans. Gigabyte says this actually reduces turbulence and thus increases airflow pressure, but we will take a look at the thermal performance later in the review. Moving on to the front side of the card here, you can see the Gigabyte logo. This is actually illuminated by RGB LEDs, which you can control using the RGB Fusion software. I do have to say though, I couldn't get it to work with this card. It would only show up red and I couldn't actually set any of the funky RGB effects. However, we did talk to Gigabyte about this and it is likely just because I've got an early sample. It's one of the first cards here in the UK. So we might be expecting a teething problem because of that. I do like the look of the matte black backplate, which covers the full length of the PCB in fact. And there's only a smallish Gigabyte logo printed in white on the back. So it's you know very minimalistic, very inoffensive. And again, it's not gonna cause any problems with a color match build. As we will see shortly when we take the card apart, the Gigabyte Gaming OC is using a reference PCB, so what that does mean is it only requires 1.6 and 1.8 pin power connectors just like the Founders Edition, and it also means the display outputs are exactly the same, so you have three display ports, one HDMI and one USB-C. So to remove the heatsink from the PCB, all you need to do is remove the seven cards from the back of the card, and then we comprise the PCB and the heatsink apart. So as mentioned, it is a reference PCB, so what that means is we can see the eight GDR6 chips, which are from Micron, and it also uses the same eight plus two power phase design as the Founders Edition. If we look closely at the GPU, we can see it is labeled TU104-400A. And this A is significant, as we know Nvidia is actually binning the chips into A and non-A counterparts, so the A chips can be factory overclocked, as this one is, whereas the non-A chips have to run at reference speeds. So this is merely confirming that we do have an A chip so we'll see if this actually impacts overclocking as well later on in the review. So now looking at the cooler itself, this uses six copper heat pipes which actually contact directly with the GPU core and then the heat is drawn away into a relatively chunky fin stack and of course then the fans dissipate the heat. Interestingly, there is also a small cold plate which is used to cool the VRAM chips and the MOSFETs while we of course have the necessary thermal pads for the rest of the VRM and those VRAM chips as well. The last thing to note is the two small headers coming off the cooler are for both the fans and the LEDs. So then moving on to the performance of the card, this is actually our first aftermarket RTX 2080 card, so here we're really just comparing directly to the Founders Edition 2080, so uh, that's going to be interesting to look at how it performs. As mentioned, we are running the card with the OC mode enabled, so that is with the 1830MHz boost clock. 
We're only going to show you 4K charts, but you can see 1080p and 1440p charts, as well as our full testing methodology over on the main site, which is www.kitgoo.net. So then looking at the 4K performance of the gaming OC, Apart from Deus Ex, we can actually see it come just behind the Founders Edition in terms of raw FPS. The difference is obviously very, very small. We're talking half of an FPS, for instance, so it's by no means a big difference, but it's still an interesting trend because on previous generations, we were used to seeing aftermarket cards improve performance by you know between 5 and 10% over the Founders Edition card or the reference card, whatever they used to call it but now it looks like for this generation, the differences are gonna be a lot smaller. So the reason for the overall performance being just behind the Founders Edition is because this Gigabyte Gaming OC wouldn't boost as high. It was still exceeding its rated boost clock. We saw an average frequency of 1867 megahertz, when the rated boost clock is 1830 megahertz, but our Founders Edition was actually boosting as high as 1892 megahertz. The benefit to the gaming OC definitely comes when we look at temperatures. That's because we saw the GPU peak at just 65 degrees, which is a full 10 degrees less than our Founders Edition RTX 2080. This also greatly helps noise levels as this card barely reached 40 decibels in terms of noise emissions. And that actually means it is the quietest card on test today. So lovers of silence, you are gonna like the gaming OC. You also get the benefit of the fan stop mode, which means the fans simply don't spin when the card is in light load situations like browsing the web or just idling on your desktop. In terms of the power consumption, it is just a reminder that we do have dedicated hardware to measure the power draw from both the PCIe slot as well as the power connectors. So the figures you're gonna see here is for the graphics card itself, not the whole system. And we can see the power consumption levels were just under 240 watts, which is pretty much what we would expect for an RTX 2080. If you're looking at the power draw for our Founders Edition RTX 2080, that is abnormally high and it is something we're talking to NVIDIA about and it's likely just a slight fault with our Founders card. So now then, moving on to overclocking, what kind of gains can we get by pushing the TU-104 chip to its limits? Well, what we did was using Aorus Engine, we maximized both the power limit, the temperature target, as well as the voltage sliders, and then we were able to add plus 125 megahertz to the GPU core, and actually plus 600 megahertz to the memory, which is more than we can manage with the Founders. This gave us decent boosts in Firestrike and Far Cry. We were seeing anywhere between five to 6% performance increase. But interestingly, the clock speed still wouldn't reach as fast as the Founders Edition. This card averaged just over 1970 megahertz, whereas our Founders was able to run over two gigahertz, which was sustained under load. What did impress me with the overclocking though, was just how little temperatures and noise levels actually rose when we were running at almost two gigahertz. For instance, you can see here noise levels jumped up by barely half a decibel and the GPU temperature actually rose by only two degrees, which still puts at 67 degrees, a fantastic result. So ultimately, while our Gigabyte sample couldn't run as fast as a Founders, it was still running into the high 1900 megahertz zone and it was doing so very quietly and actually very cool as well. That pretty much sums up the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Gaming OC. Performance difference between this card and the found position is so marginal that it actually becomes irrelevant, but what you do get is impressively low noise levels and it also runs very, very cool. The thing is, you have to pay an extra £110 for this Gigabyte card compared to the Founders Edition. That's because this Gigabyte card retails for 859 here in the UK, when we know you can pick up an RTX 2080 Founders directly from Nvidia for 749. I obviously can't decide your priorities for you, but given the Founders is still the marginally faster card, it was boosting, you know, just that extra 25 megahertz faster, those seeking the best performing card or the best bang for buck cards are probably gonna to want to go with the Founders Edition purely because it is 110 pounds less and it did boost slightly faster as we mentioned. If you do particularly want a quiet card, however, and one that runs significantly cooler, the Gigabyte card is actually excellent in that regard. We saw fantastically low noise levels and it also ran a full 10 degrees cooler than the Founders Edition. The only thing is you do have to pay an extra 110 pounds for that privilege. So I'm Dominic for KitGuru. This has been our review of the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Gaming OC 8G. If you like this video, you can give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment below, tell us what you think of the card. We'd also love you to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about all of our future videos. We've recently got in quite a few different 
aftermarket cars for the RTX 20 range, so if you don't want to miss that, be sure to hit subscribe. But until then, I will see you in the next video.